Hi, this is Terry, the founder and director of Deep Sea Foundation. I am joined today by a returning guest on our foundation channel where we talk about all topics related to breast cancer and breast reconstruction. And my returning guest is Lacey Reed. I interviewed Lacey about her deep flap experience. So please go to the Deep Sea Journey podcast, or you can watch it here on the Deep Sea Foundation uh, channel. And you can type in a young nurse and her deep flap recovery in the search engine using that little icon, uh, eyeglass icon to find that video. So to recap my introduction, Lacey is a registered nurse residing in Guthrie, Oklahoma. In November of 2022, she was diagnosed with triple positive breast cancer at the young age of 33. Lacey has over 10 years of bedside experience as a nurse from working in a cardiac ICU where she cared for countless ECMO patients to her current role as an outpatient surgery recovery RN. She's a young mom to three and two-year-old girls who are now napping during our interview. So <laughs> we're gonna roll with our questions. Um, I invited Lacey back to today to speak specifically about her experience with cold capping during her chemotherapy treatments. Lacey, welcome back. It's good to see you again. <laughs> Thank you for having me. It's kind of cool to be back. <laughs> I know this is fun and I'm, I am, don't have a cold capping video, so I'm excited to talk to you about this. Can you, let's first of all, just give a, a brief description about your diagnosis and treatment and why you decided to, you know, research cold capping and move forward with it. So, uh, I was diagnosed November 22 with triple positive breast cancer. Um, at the time, um, of diagnosis, it was, uh, stage one, um, uh, one, a two, one B we biopsied it. Um, I, it was not in my lymph nodes. Um, so at that point we knew I was stage one a, um, the first thing you do when you get breast cancer is you get on the computer and you start reach searching. Everybody does it. They tell you not to Google, but you do. Well, that led me across to this thing called cold capping and people were saving their hair during chemo. Cause the first thing you hear that if you're going to have to go chemo, do chemo, then you will probably lose your hair. And so when I saw that, it sparked my interest. Um, I always tell people, um, my hair's honestly the thing I like most about myself. Um, I've got two young girls who are super princess obsessed and they sit and do my hair all day now. Um, and so, uh, when I saw that there was a possibility I could save my hair, I delved into it and, um, I thought, well, I could do that. Um, and so I looked at all of the options that were out there and I told a couple of friends and they, uh, said, Hey, I've seen this influencer. They did that too. And led me across them and I watched their stuff and gained a little bit more confidence. Um, but then there was a money issue as well. Um, I was very fortunate. I had uh, some uh, friends and family who raised some money for me. Um, so I was able to pay for it that way because cold capping is not covered by insurance yet. We're hoping to change that. Um, but that's um, something I hope that I can get my word out there that it actually works for patients. Um, when I presented it to my oncologist that um, that's something I wanted to do that, um, she was a little bit hesitant about it. She said, well, you know, it could, it could work, but I haven't seen it work yet. And she's been practicing over 20 years, um, in Oklahoma. And she said she had a, a lady, um, who was currently doing it, who was having a little bit of success. And this was at the very beginning of our first, uh, meeting. And then later on in the meeting, she brought it back up and she was like, well, you, you just have really great hair. And, um, at the I, time I um, concur, <laughs> <laughs> my hair was uh, longer than it was now. It was down past my breast actually. Wow. And she said, well, if anybody's going to try it, you know, you, I think you should. So that gave me a little bit more confidence at that point. And I just dove into it a hundred percent. I found a company that I really liked. 
Um, they could get the equipment to me fast. Um, they provided everything I needed uh, as well. And uh, I got the ball rolling and I did it. <laughs> so what's the science behind it, Lacey? And, and I'm glad that you mentioned the insurance payment. We, and I also want to thank you for saying we hope to change that. That's the voice of a patient advocate if I ever heard one. So, yeah. because I I remember when I had chemotherapy, I didn't know about cold capping. That was in 2002. So mm -hmm. I was, I was bald. It was, it was um, psychologically difficult for me. I got sure. a wig. I'm going to say straight up front for me, I hated wearing it, but I was in Texas at the time. And it was hot and it was summertime. Yeah, that's yeah. terrible. Ick. So I just, generally, I just wore a bandana most of the time. Um, or, I, or I just, you know, didn't wear anything. Uh, I wish I would have known about cold capping then. So what is the science behind it? So basically what it does is um, you freeze your scalp. And when you freeze your scalp, you constrict those blood vessels. So they get smaller and the amount of chemotherapy drug that gets to the hair follicles is much less, um, thus ensuring that the hair follicle stays intact. So the hair follicle does not fall out. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> we've seen it uh, with uh, patients with neuropathy. They wear ice on their hands and feet kind of for the same thing or to save your fingernails, um, things like that. So it's the same thought process. If you freeze whatever the amount of medicine getting to that will be a lot less mm -hmm. basically. Okay. Well, I know you have a great slide presentation for us today with lots of information. So let's go ahead and start screen sharing and I will let you drive as you are showing us the screen. Yeah. Okay. And I'm talking right now, but while you're All pulling right. this up. Got it on your slide? I do. Okay, cool. So this is uh, my experience. Um, I started in December uh, 15th, actually 2022, which is your birthday as well. Yes, it is. <laughs> uh, that was the day I started. <laughs> So um, one of the things to think about before you uh, start cold capping is probably your hair type. Somebody with a very thin hair type um, is probably not going to have as much success. Uh, there's some studies out there and people and myself, I would say nobody lost zero percent of hair. Everybody lost a little. I would say mine was maybe five to ten percent. Um, I explain my uh, shedding as very similar to what I went through um, the postpartum period. Um, I have a picture of my biggest shed, which is not much really um, comparative what people go through through this. Um, so before I have super, super thick hair. Um, it was very long too. I've got coarse hair. It has a lot of texture. So I have a lot to lose. There's some people who don't have a lot to lose. And I would suggest to those people think long and hard about it, especially if you don't have the funds for it, or if, you know, you're going to dig out of your savings to get this. It, is it worth it in the long run? I don't know. And you have to have that conversation with yourself and your family. Mm -hmm. Um, but for me, um, I wanted to do it. I wanted to look like myself. Like I said before, it's the thing I like most about myself. I mean, I was voted best hair in my senior class. So um, I, I really like my hair. <laughs> hair I always have. Um, so one thing I did before I started chemo was uh, I cut my hair. Um, when my hair is very long, I have a lot more shedding. It tangles a lot more. Um, and that's just something that happens on the regular. I have had instances throughout my life. I let it grow out and I cut it. And when I cut it, it's a lot more manageable. It's not as heavy either. Mm -hmm. And one of the most important thing is through cold capping is you need to be very gentle on your hair. You can't wear it in tight ponytails. Um, you wash it in cold water. There's no, you don't 
take hot showers basically. And so I knew if my hair was long, I would have to wear tight ponytails. Um, frequently, um, I would have lots of shedding. It would tangle. So I decided to cut about six inches off my hair, um, which actually through the cold capping companies is not suggested um, to do it that close to when you're starting chemo. I had my hair cut about um, a week and a half before I started chemo, but I knew personally that I wouldn't be able to manage it when it was this long compared to this long, basically. Makes so perfect that's sense to I me. That. Yep. Makes perfect sense to um, me. When you find um, a company um, that you like, there's several different companies out there. The company I chose was one in the United States and two, they provided everything that I needed for cold capping. So cost is a really big issue. Um, they were actually... Uh, right online with all the other companies, but getting all the other supplies then cost you more money as well. So this company that I chose, they provided everything down to the cooler, um, even hair ties I wore, they provided me with a temperature gun, gloves uh, to handle the dry ice and a whole training um, uh, system, both uh, I had videos to watch and I did uh, conferences one on one, basically what we're doing as well, them training me. Um, now, if you're in the Dallas metro area, they uh, actually can come out and provide hands on training. But if you're not local, then it's a Zoom meeting, basically. And it was wonderful. I don't have any complaints about that. So good, um, good patient support then. Yes, um, they uh run you through the timing of this um, and everything. That's the slide you see um, my whole day, basically. And by the end of the day, these sheets had so many little ticks on them. We kept running numbers of different things, um, how the caps were doing in the system. I had a total of six caps that were be being rotated throughout the day and they had to be a certain temperature um, to go on my head. Um, the caps had to maintain a negative degree Celsius temperature the whole time they were on their, my head. So if I, we would take one off and I would check it, if it was a positive temperature, I knew I had to spend less time with the next cap on my head because I was spending too much time. So on average, the caps were on my head about 20 minutes or 20 minutes before they reached that positive temperature. When they went on my head, they were about negative 35 degrees Celsius. And then when they came off, they were, I was hoping they would be negative five to negative one um, degree Celsius. And they would go back in the cooler and they had this whole system. Um, you put these caps in on the dry ice and then you take them off. And as you reach your, your next available cap, it should be the right temperature. Now, sometimes they were actually too cold. And you'll see a slide here in a little bit with my mom sitting with the cap on her head, trying to warm it up. We would go to the window and put it in the sun too. Um, and just constantly checking um, the temperature of those was huge. And that's why you have to have a partner uh, doing this because if you're trying to receive chemo and trying to check your temperatures at the same time, it's impossible. Um, the caps, uh, they have to have an insert the system I chose. Not every, um, system has the same type of caps, but these caps, they, uh, you stuck a, uh, bag of dry ice basically down in them and they held their shape because if you didn't stick this insert in there and with the dry ice, they wouldn't hold their shape. And then you'll see in a minute when I have a video, they won't go on your head because they're frozen pretty solid. Is the dry ice underneath the white inserts that you showed us? Um, so no, you just stick the bag just right in there. Basically. I see. I see. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, this, um, is kind of what, uh, chemo day, what I look like. I look like the Pillsbury Doughboy. Um, <laughs> one of my, uh, uh, friends, uh, she said, uh, it looks, uh, like Mario brothers too, like the mushroom. <laughs> it does. Um, oh my yeah. gosh. Oh, um, uh, so when these caps go on your head, there's some preparations you have to do before, um, you need to, uh, one, protect all the skin, um, on your forehead and your ears too. Um, so again, they provided all of this. I didn't have to go out and find these things on my own. Like some of the other companies did. Um, we, uh, cut this thing to shape over my head. It went over my forehead like this and down my face. And then on my ears, we um, actually used maxi pads. 
uh, cut, folded, and then we took Tegaderm um, or uh, Coban. Some people call it vet wrap um, and wrapped those around my ears to, to protect my ears. So I didn't get frostbite on my ears. Cause remember negative 35 degrees Celsius, this is going on. Mm. Um, this system required uh, your uh, hair to be saturated wet. So uh, they provided the spray bottle and a comb. We had to get the water of course, but my mom would spray and make a part spray all the way until we got my cap, my whole head saturated. Um, at that point, um, I uh, could put the shower cap on and that's the first picture you see right there. Um, after that goes on, um, you're ready uh, to put your cold cap on and uh, you check it and make sure that cold cap was um, around that negative 35 to negative 30 degrees Celsius mark. Um, and you put it on your head and I think it's the next slide kind of shows that process um, of it going on my head. Uh, the first uh, cap is terrible. The second cap isn't the greatest, by, but the third, your head is pretty numb. Um, the worst part about it um, is uh, making sure your ears stay covered because you, you can see they're tight. And when you're putting them on your head, you know, your coverings uh, get uh, moved a little bit. Um, there's some people that can't tolerate them. You know, everybody's pain is different. Oh, yeah. um, myself, I probably have a really high tolerance for pain, um, where some people, they just can't and they can't do it. Um, my thought process was, Hey, this is my job. I paid too much money. My, you know, family and friends, you know, put a lot into this as well. So I'm going to give it everything I had. And like I said, by that third cap, I, it wasn't a, even an issue anymore. I didn't fill it. Um, one thing as well, um, <clears throat> my, uh, center, the chairs were heated. I had an electric blanket, so I was always warm everywhere except my head basically. So on this slide, you can see how saturated my head is. That's before the shower cap goes on. Like I said, you would just uh, part it. Um, and through chemo, through uh, the cold capping too, uh, you would have to change your part. So my mom would all constantly be checking my part wherever it was to make sure it didn't get too red. Basically, if she noticed redness, she would start moving my part. And that's something that they suggest as well. Um, if you look really, really close on that first side, you can see the icicles in my hair. Um, <laughs> yeah, I see them kind of off to the back yep. on the, yep. Yeah. I yep. see it, it was frozen. It was very, very cold. Um, the middle picture, um, like I said, that was my biggest complaint and um, it was, they were hard to get on. Um, they can kind of compress your ear and I had to adjust them through chemo too. Cause like I said, putting that cap on messed them up as well. Um, was it so a, was it a bit of mind over matter? 100% it is. Mm -hmm. And that's why I said, I treated it like my job. I was going to give 100%, um, mm -hmm. to it. Um, I put my, uh, slides with my girls up there so you can kind of see how big they are. Um, they're soft, they're a gel type material, so they will form to you, but my girls would wear them around. Uh, cause when I would come home, they were home, um, as well and they saw it and I wanted them to be, you know, involved and not scared of it. One, cause I did look scary. If you saw my mushroom hat, um, to a one and a half year old and two year old at the time, they were like, Whoa, what happened to mommy basically? Um, and so they were super comfortable with them, would run around, um, and had no issues with them. Um, this is what the cooler looked like. Um, there was 80 pounds of dry ice in it. Um, so not only did you have the, uh, weight of the cooler, the caps, the shelving system in it, but the dry ice. So you're talking over a hundred pounds here. Um, it was super heavy. Um, luckily I'm young. My mom is also, you know, pretty in good shape as well. And uh, we managed it great. I was very fortunate. Uh, my center um, had like a valet uh, parking. And uh, whenever they would see us kind of messing with the cooler, they would run out and help us get it in and out. They were really good about that. But my mom and I were fine with it. She would grab one side and I would grab the other. And it was just one, two, three, up. And then we would put it uh, in. Um, th so they provided, again, the cooler. They provided the dolly, the strap for the dolly, just all these different things. And a lot of these other companies, they just send you the 
caps. And so you are out of pocket looking for a cooler, a strap. Um, the only thing we were out of pocket for was the dry ice. Um, and uh, finding dry ice can be a little bit difficult if you get it from the grocery stores um, for 80 pounds. It averaged at the time, it was a little bit over $200. Um, if you get it at the place where it may, they make the dry ice, like an air gas or a place like that, basically, um, it averaged about $80, um, a, a time. So I did six, uh, chemo, uh, therapy rounds. Um, I did taxa tier and, uh, carboplatin, uh, and, uh, let's see. So my, um, helpers were my, um, husband, um, he was the dry ice getter. So he would get the dry ice the night before and put it in the cooler. And then the morning of chemo, we would wake up and pack the cooler. The cooler had to be packed at three hours before you started chemo. They had it timed perfect. So if I had a chemo, my chemo start time was 8 AM. We were getting up at 5 AM to get that cooler packed. Um, he would pack it for me. And then my mom and I would basically take it over from there. That's my mom closing the cooler. If you look really close, you can see the dry ice, uh, the vapors, uh, the gas coming off of it as well. Um, one thing to think about when you're driving down the road, if you have dry ice in your car, one thing I didn't ever know is, uh, you gotta have your window open or cause it's very toxic once it, uh, vaporizes and hits the air. And so there was a couple of times my mom and I would be driving down the road and we get, you know, 10 miles. We're like, oh no, we don't have the windows open. You know, so we put the windows open real quick. Um, there's my mom sitting in the chair. Like I said earlier, um, sometimes the cows would be too cold and she uh, was uh, very warm. Um, and so use the cap to help herself out and to help me warm it up a little bit. You can see sitting on the cooler, there's gloves to handle the caps. Um, again, they're dry ice and you can't touch dry ice with your bare hands. So you have to have gloves. They provided those. We've got our temperature gun right there as well. Um, and then I had a constant timer going on during this because the caps were, every 20 minutes, I got to change. I got to change, but you got to think before that 20 minutes are done, you have to get the cap out and make sure it's the right temperature to get on your head too. Mm -hmm. So downtime, my mom maybe had five to less than 10 minutes, basically in between each cap while she was doing this to try to figure out, um, the right temperature. Um, the, uh, day after chemo, this is what my hair would look like basically every day, it was just a ratty mess. Remember my hair's thick. I have lots of texture to it. Um, I couldn't brush it. Um, cause I would, I would have to pull it too hard. So this is me. <laughs> um, the, uh, you're not supposed to wash your hair, uh, three days post chemo. Um, so this is what your hair would look like. Um, they only suggest washing your hair one to two times a week. Um, for some people that's really hard for, because they're everyday hair washers. Uh, for me, I wasn't, um, I did something called hair training several years ago. Um, that's a whole nother topic as well. Um, but, um, I'm only, I only wash my hair once a week. Um, again, it's really thick and I had already trained my hair, um, not to produce a lot of grease anyways. And so I was fortunate in that. So again, I only wash my hair once a week, uh, through this, I only had to take that cold shower um, once a week. Um, here's my timing. Um, so the, the first, uh, picture there, uh, is, uh, the first time we did the ca uh, cold capping, uh, in December, I had not over nine hours with that cap on my head. And the last, one of the last times, um, it was a little bit over seven hours that day, uh, with the cold cap on my head again, so remember you, 35 degrees Celsius. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you would put it on in the infusion center at the cancer center and you would wear it home then because correct. So okay, yeah, you start this, the cold capping 50 minutes before chemo starts, mm -hmm. and then you do it all throughout chemo. And then for four to five hours afterwards, and based on the type of chemo, they'll tell you if you should do four to five I figured I'll do five. They told me I only had to do four. I did five just because I was like, it's not going to hurt me to do another hour. Yeah. Um, 
because at that point I didn't really feel it. So I always did another hour um, than they suggested. Um, and that's one thing I did notice um, when I was researching it um, based on uh, this manual capping that I did um, versus capping um, these systems that some of these hospital um, have. I thought the people that I saw personally had better results with the cold capping because they were able to wear it longer after, after the chemo was being given. Um, I was wearing it five hours afterwards. And if you have a system that's done in the hospital, it's usually only done two hours after you do chemo. So that's something to think about as well. Um, if you're thinking about cold caffeine, um, look at that and see what you think. Um, here's what I think maybe when I started wearing the ice on my hands and my feet, um, I did develop a little bit of neuropathy um, in them. So I started to do that. So, but remember I had that electric chair and electric blanket. So I was pretty toasty. It was just annoying having those things on your hands because you can't do anything, which I think a lot of people do through chemo. That's pretty typical as well. Um, did you sit and chat with your mom? Did you, did you look at, what did you do? Yeah. I mean, we, we were so busy with the caps. Like I said, they were yeah. being changed every 20 minutes, managing the ice. You know, I was the timer. I, you know, I had my watch. I was timing on my phone. I was timing on, um, and they were, you know, in and out of there, you know, changing bags and stuff. So I didn't really have a lot of time to sit there and like scroll or read or watch TV to tell you the truth. It made the day go by super quick. I, I never had a relaxing day where I like brought a book and got to take a nap. No, that was not my chemo experience at all. Mm -hmm. I was doing work. <laughs> and, um, I, and I see you had a dance, uh, uh, song there to go with it. Yeah. So, uh, it was cold. I would always send my uh, friends to, every time we would do it. I, I baby. Perfect um, song. I love it. You can see there's a strap that goes under my chin there. I'll explain this a little bit. So I had the uh, gel cap on my head and then there was another uh, strap that you would put on basically. Um, and it was a Velcro strap and it was super tight, but it made that uh, cap meet all points of your scalp basically. Um, so there was no areas of air. And so that all those hair follicles were froze. Um, the worst part about that was it was super tight and I would constantly be going around like this. Um, none of those pictures show that there's some people that put like a scarf or a sock there and have it pulled down. But for me, I just took my hand and, uh, held it down and that it's not going to hurt anything because again, it wants pressure on it, mm -hmm. you know, so you can, uh, touch as many hair follicles as possible. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Um, this kind of just goes to show you, I did not have to, uh, show or tell people that I was going through chemo. This was taken like two to three days apart from each other. You can kind of see, I don't have much for eyebrows for me. My eyelashes were pretty much gone here, but the very next picture was taken, like I said, a couple days later and I patched my eyebrows on, I put some eyeliner on and I went out to eat, you know, dinner with my husband and nobody had to know that. I was having chemo. In fact, I had a lot of friends who didn't know what was happening um, through it. And later on, they were like, oh, I had no clue you were going through that. And I was like, well, that was my goal. I didn't want to have to talk about it until I was ready. Um, just some more pictures. This is my last chemo. Like I said, I did six treatments of a taxotere and carboplatin. Um, uh, you can see, I have all my hair intact there. Um, I was pretty excited to walk into that, uh, oncologist, uh, appointment that day and show her, Hey, I still have my hair, you know, and I made her a believer after that. In fact, uh, they've, uh, sent hence, uh, uh sent me some girls, uh, who, uh, wanted some more info on it as well. And so I've been able to share that, um, too. Um, there's me with the cooler the last day, getting out of there and sayonara chemo, you know, you got to ring the bell, have that special thing in the cold. Yay. Uh, just a couple more pictures, my mom, my helper, and then just, there's another picture with my little girl. Like I said, I didn't want to be scared of it. So they got to touch and see all the, th the things. Um, my biggest shed during treatment, there it is. Um, and it's not 
really a, a lot comparatively. I mean, it's, it's something that I'm very, very fortunate. Um, not everybody is going to have success with cold caffeine and there could be a number of reasons why. Um, but like you said, it was a mental thing for me. I put everything I had into it. Um, at the time I'm also a nurse. So talking to the nurses about timing of medicines and stuff is easy for me. I do that. I've done it for, you know, over 10 years. So that was super easy. Um, I wasn't nervous about that. And that's a lot of people's hold up. Well, when do I start? When do I talk to the nurses? Are the nurses going to be nice about it? Or are they going to support this decision? Um, I didn't care um, if they did or not. Um, I wanted to make everyone a believer in it. And I think I did that um, in my center. Uh, this is about four weeks after chemo. Um, you can see my eyebrows are completely gone there. No eyelashes. Um, and then this is about two months after chemo. I still, that is my hair. In fact, um, I still at this point was uh, taking uh, cold showers um, or washing my hair with cold water and being very gentle on my hair. Um, this was, I think the second time I put any heat on it as well. Uh, during chemo, like I said before, you don't want to put it in tight ponytails, um, be hard on your hair with brushing it, um, or put any heat on it. So I wasn't blow drying my hair at all either. Everything was air dried. Um, and I think this was the second time I curled my hair for my, uh, daughter's, uh, second, uh, second birthday there this last summer. Okay. And no segue here, Lacey, but I see the OSU cowboy. <laughs> yeah. I, I went to OSU and we rode them when my husband and I were on the rowing team in college. Really? I'm not kidding. That's funny. So both my husband and I were uh, alumni <laughs> for OSU Cowboys. grads. Yep. Go Pokes. Yeah. And, and um, this is me the first time I had my hair done um, mm. about three months after chemo. At this point, I was uh, blow drying my hair occasionally, putting heat on it whenever I needed to. So I felt confident in going um, and getting my hair done. Um, we used an ammonia-free hair dye. Um, and it looked pretty right then, but a month later it had really faded, um, back to what it was, which was fine, but you know what? It made me feel good to get my hair done that day. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I've gotten it done, uh, two more times, uh, since then. Um, so my last chemo was March 30th last year. So I'm not even a year out. Um, and I still have all my hair today. As you can see, this is all me. Unbelievable. And it's grown too. You can tell. Oh yeah. It's get, grown getting since, back. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What a fantastic story. I do have a couple of questions for you, Lacey. Yeah, um, let's... I'm in, and if you want to, you can, you can stop your uh, screen share. If we've gone through all of the slides now. Um, so my questions are this, I'll wait till you get done with the screen share. This should be down at the bottom. I think there's an option that says stop screen share, clear down at the bottom of the, of these. Yeah. Got it. I can edit this stuff out. <laughs> um, so I have a couple questions for you, Lacey. Uh, first of all, Oh my gosh, thank you for the transparency of that presentation. You left yeah. no stone unturned, but you were very transparent about the commitment that it took. My question is this, were you working at the time that you went through this? Because I'm thinking to myself, if you're a working woman and you have an eight to five job, you're going to have to make some adjustments. You said yeah. you had that on for. Yeah, so I was, um, I, uh, am just what they consider PRN, um, in my nursing position. So it's on an as needed basis. Mm -hmm. Um, I've been, uh, with my current employer, um, it'll be a little bit over six years now. Um, so I've got, uh, some really good rapport built up with our team and they were super good about, you know, if I was available, I could work, um, if I was sick or on chemo days, you know, they knew I couldn't. Um, so I tried to work as much as possible. Um, maybe I averaged at the time, 
um, working one time a week, basically. Um, but there were some weeks I got sick um, and I couldn't. And two, I've got young kids who um, really aren't in childcare other than mother's stay out. So um, I am their primary caregiver um, basically on every other day. So I only had limited availability I was working, but mm-hmm. um, I did, I worked uh, all during it. So my biggest takeaways from this are uh, time commitment and cost. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, the, those are the things that I think women need to know about if they're going to consider cold capping uh, and all the details you give. Thank you so much. I'm going to give yeah, a huge shout out to your mom and your husband. Yeah, they I deserve mean, it. You know, caregivers are just such an integral part of breast cancer treatment, recovery, surgery, all of the above. So I, thank you so much for sharing this with us today. I really, really appreciate it. Um, yeah, it you're was, very welcome. Yeah, and, and especially from a nurse's perspective, I think it helps to really know the science behind it but again, your transparency in talking about the good, the bad, and all the things of cold capping. Yeah. Yeah. It's not for everybody, but um, I think everybody should have access um, to the option to do it and be presented with it rather than me who had to kind of find out the information on their own. But I think it, because of me, I mean, it's being presented in uh, my community now. So that's exciting. Well, we're going to get this out on the uh, Deep Sea Journey uh, private Facebook group and in the Deep Sea Foundation community because it's a story worth telling. Thank you again for sharing it with us today, Lacey. I really appreciate it. Very welcome. Thanks for having me. And good to see you and your lovely locks of hair again. Oh, thanks. (laughs) Take care. You too.